You're listening to Greater Good Radio Hawaii. Please visit us online at greatergoodradio.com. Today's guest is Gail Mukaihata Hanneman. Gail has spent 15 years as a congressional aide and professional staff member of a U.S. House of Representative Legislative Committee. Gail, then what took you away from Washington, D.C.? Actually, my husband. <laughs> Uh, so you folks met in Washington, We met in Washington, D.C. many, many, many years ago. How did you guys meet? Well, I can tell you that we agree on how we met, and then after that the story changes <laughs> drastically. Uh, we were, he was actually working for the Department of Interior, and I was working for a congressman who represented an area that had, was multi-ethnic, and it had a lot of um, island, Asian Pacific Islanders. And so clearly I understood that. Pacific Asian side to it. There was the Pacific side of it in terms of some of the cultures I really didn't quite uh, get a full, had a full appreciation for. So actually, we, uh, we had met actually at a congressman's reception and we started talking and I was asking him a lot of questions about Polynesian culture, which clearly that's what his orientation is. And then after that, that we, you know, we developed mainly a working relationship. So you guys so, worked for a while together, and then we didn't work together. Was, no, I don't know. It's not. Well. <laughs> that's where the story changes. Yeah, that's where the story changes. I was working. <laughs> I don't know what his story is, but I was working. <laughs> and, and then you, when you first moved to Hawaii, was it culture shock at all, or was was it pretty comfortable? How was it for this you? Wasn't a cult. I grew up if in L.A. area and in Gardena, Torrance area. If most everyone now knows where that is. And back then, actually, Gardena, um, this was in the 60s and 70s, had the most, they had more Japanese Americans per capita than any other place in the United States. So it had, and I think Hawaii has a very similar Asian culture in that. There's a, there's obviously other mixes that go in there. But a lot of the, the customs and things um, work the same. In fact, when I moved to D.C., it, it was very strange. That was a culture shock to me because it's a very different way of doing business. People are much more upfront. It's it's, I want to say it's in your face because there's a lot of subtleties that go beyond, but it's a very different way of dealing with people. And I, I actually struggled in the beginning to kind of figure out how to find my place and to fit in. But I remember that one of the uh, longtime friendships that I've developed with this one friend of mine, it all started with, if you look at her, she looks very holly. She's an Italian um, Irish extract. And um, she and I are like night and day, personality-wise, interest-wise, etc. But we became really good friends, and it came over a simple custom where we were we like food. So Italians love food, you know. Just, I love food, and we were exchanging food back and forth. And of course, these little containers. And she actually knows it. She said to me, "With the way you br- were brought up, can you never return something empty?" And I thought, "Well, I don't know. I never thought about it. You know, you just do it." And I said, I guess so. That's how I was brought up. She goes, that's how I was brought up. And nobody else here understands that, you know. So that, you know, that actually, cult, that cultural orientation actually brought us close. But when, so coming to Hawaii, it was very similar how I grew up. You know, I actually missed that part, I think I would say, living in Hawaii, I mean, living in D.C. So it feels, it felt like home from day one. Thanks for tuning in. Stay tuned for more on Greater Good Radio.